just thinking about asbestos and uh, well it was known for a very long time uh, that it was bad you know it was the early 20th century you know they knew about asp asbestosis and everything anyway in the 1960s when I was a child at primary school there were two occasions once was in 1964 when I was in fourth class and another was in 1966 when I was in uh, sixth class mosquito <laughs> and um, on both those occasions the electricians came after school hours and before school hours to put in new lighting and I remember because in the mornings there was all asbestos all over the tables these were portable buildings and um, the uh, teachers were getting annoyed with the children for playing with asbestos all on our desks. We were playing with the stuff. And uh, the people came in to screw the lights during the evening and the early morning. The, the electricians that were, were were hired, I don't know if they were private contractors or government people, but they were uh, doing it and they were certainly exposed to all that um, asbestos. And this is just in the Australian uh, New South Wales public school system. So you had all these uh, pupils being exposed in the 1960s to asbestos. At the, uh, these were portable buildings. I presume they used it in the non-portable portable buildings as well. That was in 64 and 66 on two occasions that I remember. And of course all the, teeth of the cleaning staff would have been exposed after the children left in the afternoons. All the ladies that used to come to uh, do the, the cleaning ladies there were women back then. <laughs> they weren't uh, just people, persons. They were women. All the cleaning ladies would have been exposed to that asbestos. They would have swept it up. And that's another thing. The portable buildings would have been particularly dangerous because portable school buildings, when you walk in them, they vibrate. When the teacher slammed the door in a, in a temper, the whole building would vibrate. You know, if you closed the windows in those portable buildings, the whole buildings would vibrate. So teachers and pupils that are, uh, you know, in the school day and all the cleaning staff, they would have been regularly exposed to small amounts of asbestos. So, you know, yes, pipes too. That's something I've just thought of, pipes. Now, that was just my school. Our house had, uh, as my father built our house, and it had asbestos board in the in the bathroom and the laundry and the eaves. We kids built a cubby house out of that. That was a blue grey asbestos. Yes, I don't remember now. A blue grey asbestos, we built a cubby house, so we were all exposed. We had fibro chimney too in that um I think that might have been white asbestos because I saw that chimney years later when it was being removed and I was shocked that no, no uh, the man who was going to come and take it away wasn't wearing any protective gear or anything. There was, used to be chimneys in our house for the, the, the heater and for the uh, slow combustion stove. My father used to put a bit of wire up the chimney to clean it out regularly so there would have been asbestos coming down exposing him and coming into the house area as well. That's another example of asbestos in the home to which I was exposed and the rest of my family was exposed. All the walls and eaves were made out of, out of the stuff, yeah, you know, in those utility rooms. We made a cubby house out of it. We were banging it around. The manhole into our ceiling cavity was asbestos. We used to go up there sometimes for a look. We'd be banging that piece of asbestos board around, breathing the stuff in, obviously. Uh, I remember my father cutting formica with a sort of buzzsaw affair. Now formica and laminex, they, I don't know if they still have uh, asbestos in them, but they had asbestos. I remember my father cutting that indoors and there was all uh, dust everywhere. You could smell the awful glue smell of formica. This was in our living room. So he was tossing all asbe asbestos everywhere. The people, you know, they knew about asbestos back then. My neighbour, our neighbours had a fibro house. It was a portable house that was moved there from some little mining town. Now that had blue-grey asbestos walls and um, I remember uh, my neighbour painting that house. He was scraping that house with a, scra a blowtorch and a scraper, you know, to clean the paint off before he put fresh paint on. And all that dust would have been blowing. Oops, my screen went black.
back. All that dust was his children, his young children were all playing in that yard. So, you know, he was getting exposed to my neighbour, to all that uh, 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 blue-grey asbestos. And uh, that's another thing, uh, certain roofs, roofs or roofs, uh, certain roofs are made of asbestos and um, uh, not on our house, but some of the neighboring neighbors' houses had uh, asbestos roofs. With, and you could, uh, obviously, it was being blown around the neighborhood too because a few years ago I saw those houses. I went back to my hometown and I saw those houses and they were getting very old and you could see the asbestos was all loose. It's obviously <laughs> blowing around the neighborhood. And, uh, you know, roofs are a problem. They should be sealed. Oh, carav uh, caravans. Caravans, yes. I've lived in a caravan up, to recent, up, up until uh, recent times. We lived in an old caravan. And to, uh, I came to conclude in, in a state of shock and horror over the years that it was the ceiling was made of asbestos. I didn't sort of put two and two together, but I realized it was asbestos. And every time we opened the hatch and closed the hatch, uh, there were all little cracks in the uh, sort of the board around the uh, around the hatch. Every, we would bang it and clo open and close the hatch every day to let air in, fresh air in. We were being exposed every day. Our cats were exposed. We were exposed. This is just in a caravan. And uh, that, free, that uh, yes, um, my father put a fridge, a small cocktail fridge, through that uh, caravan roof, and uh, that would have loosened it up too. You could see little cracks in the in the in the board. It was an impressed sort of board, like uh, leatherette or something. It had a sort of artificial sort of leathery type finish to it, but it was asbestos, and you could see ants too. You could see ants living in the cracks and. Uh, drilling in there and when I used to close it every day the drops would fall on my boyfriend uh, uh, on on his pillow I, I just thought it's plaster or something you know I didn't really know what it was but it was asbestos and I've still got to get rid of that stupid caravan how am I going to get rid of it that has probably cost me thousands of dollars to get rid of it you know I can't as a responsible person I, I have to dispose of it responsibly don't I I can't expose further people and exposure, what other sorts of exposure? Yes, my father used to scrape the chimneys, the soot out of our chimneys. And when that man, I was shocked, I, I said to my mother, that looks like asbestos, that is asbestos. It was sort of like, like sort of material, like, like hair. The uh, chimney asbestos was that yellow, well, whitish sort of asbestos. It wasn't glass wool, it was asbestos. You can tell, it's got a different look to uh, glass wool. That's another thing. We had an old fridge here, uh, not not a fridge, an old stove, and we fixed it up occasionally. And when it finally had it, we were sort of when it when it was finally uh, just wouldn't work anymore. We opened it up to try and fix it, but I was shocked. This H. G. Palmer's it was H. G. Palmer's stove, a cooker. It had all white asbestos everywhere, just all stuffed into it. Imagine all the workers that were exposed to all that asbestos. Oh. I've still got that stove too. How am I going to dispose of that? That's going to cost me money to dispose of it. Our local tip, you have to pay, you have to make an appointment to dispose of asbestos and there are all special rules for disposing of asbestos and the stuff's everywhere. And that's another thing. Stupidly, when my, when I was amazed, 25 years ago when we first came here, my local council put in water pipes to our place. We could, we were new. We put in water pipes. And on the side of the concrete water pipes, it said asbestos. And I was shocked. I thought they must have known what they were doing. Anyway, about 20 years later, just a few years ago, they did the whole town with non-asbestos pipes. So, you know, they paid twice, basically. They spent a fortune to make the town safe again by digging... Under, well, they didn't dig up all the old asbestos pipes. They're still in the ground. They put new pipes a couple of yards away. And that was amazing. This is what my council did, the New South Wales Council did in the mid 80s. They were still, in the mid 80s, they were putting uh, asbestos concrete pipes around. Ah, shocking. Pipes. My father used to clean brake shoes, you know, he used to do all our car maintenance. He would clean brake shoes, and when I was a child, when he was a good, in a good mood, he'd 
he'd blow the asbestos in my face just as a joke because he didn't know asbestos was dangerous. He used to blow asbestos in my face as a joke. Oh. He'd blow the asbestos in my face. Now, I don't know what they're putting in brake shoes nowadays, but years ago they said that everyone who lived in the, in cities were exposed to asbestos anyway because of all the uh, all the uh, brake shoes. You know, there was every city had asbestos, so many parts per million. Anyway, when my father died, I don't know, they said he had so many, um, so many certain such and such and so and so amount of asbestos in his lungs. That's what the post-mortem said, but I don't know how much he had in his lungs. And he uh, didn't die of uh, asbestos, asbestosis or what's that, mesothelioma or something. He just died of uh, a heart condition that he had. So that's my acquaintance with asbestos. The stuff was everywhere, and uh, yes, the asbestos companies have tried to wriggle out of, you know, paying compensation. And it's pretty shocking, you know, because the stuff's just everywhere, isn't it? And uh, whole generations of children were exposed. Oh, that's another thing. Carpets, too. I knew someone who worked in the carpet. The asbestos, the old bags that asbestos used to come in, in Australia, up until the 1970s, uh, under felt for carpets was made out of shredded, uh, shredded sacks that had, had asbestos in them. So, under felt for carpets was used to put under carpets for a whole generation of people too. And as those carpets are ripped up, you know, all so many people would have been exposed just just from having a car putting carpet down in their home, and uh, when they eventually rip all that under felt out. So, it's a pretty shocking story, the asbestos story. That's just my uh, acquaintance with asbestos anyway. I'm not an expert, but I think people should be more responsible with asbestos. They should. That's my vlog for today. See ya.